today we've got this nice integral which has some relation to both the gamma function and the beta function. Although we will not directly exploit those connections to the gamma function and the beta function, we'll just calculate this integral in a straightforward manner using some tricks along the way. Although these tricks can be generalized to work with those special functions directly. Okay, so let's see what we've got. We have the integral from zero to one of x to the 2021 times one minus x squared to the 1010. And we're gonna use the following lemma along the way. And that says for all n bigger than or equal to zero, we're considering this to be a non-negative integer. We have the integral from zero to infinity of x to the two n plus one times e to the minus x squared dx equals n factorial over two. So let's maybe get to it. We're gonna start with the proof of this lemma. And since this depends on this discrete variable n, we probably wanna use induction. So let's do that. So our induction hypothesis, which is the starting point for our induction will be the n equals zero case. So let's see, in this n equals zero case, our integral collapses to the integral from zero to infinity of x times e to the minus x squared dx. And of course, we can calculate that hopefully pretty easily using some sort of substitution. So let's do that. So let's maybe set u equal to um, x squared. That makes du equal to 2x dx, which means x times dx is 1 half du. So that sets up our substitution quite nicely. We have this is one half du, and then this will be minus u. So this leaves us with one half times the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus u du. Where of course along the way I had to be a little bit careful to change the bounds of integration. It just turns out that when x is equal to zero, u is also equal to zero, and as x approaches infinity, u also approaches infinity. So there's not really anything to do there. Okay, so now we can take the antiderivative. That will leave us with negative one half e to the minus u evaluated from zero to infinity, keeping in mind that when we say evaluated infinity, we're really taking a limit but we can take this minus sign and use it to change the order of the bounds of integration, really just the bounds of evaluation, if you will. So we've got e to the minus u evaluated from infinity to zero. So plugging in zero gives us one half. Plugging in infinity or taking the limit as u approaches infinity will give us zero. So in the end, our answer is one half. But of course, that's equal to zero factorial over two, meaning that this formula is satisfied for our base case. Oh, I should have said this is our base case, not the induction hypothesis, obviously. Okay, so now let's move on to making an induction hypothesis and then proving the induction step. So we just proved the base case for this lemma here, which we'll use to calculate our integral. Now we're ready to make an induction hypothesis and then prove the induction step. So let's suppose for some non-negative integer k, we have the kth version of this holds. In other words, the integral from zero to infinity of x to the 2k plus 1 times e to the minus x squared dx equals k factorial over 2. And then we'll consider the k plus first case, which is the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the 2k plus 3 times e to the minus x squared dx. From here, we'll make a substitution that's fairly similar to what we did in the base case. Let's set t equal to x squared. So that means that x dx is equal to 1 half dt. Again, using a calculation very similar to what we did before, just with kind of a different dummy variables. And now since we have a t is x squared here, but we've got an odd power of x, we'll wanna split this into an 
even power of x and then just a single power of x. So this will be something like x squared to the k plus 1 times x. But now this x can be combined with this dx term to leave us with 1 half dt. Okay, so let's see what that leaves us with. We'll have the integral from 0 up to infinity. We can bring this half out front. And then we'll have t to the k plus 1 e to the minus t dt. Now we might want to use integration by parts on this integral. So let's see, a standard integration by parts would be to take u to be t to the k plus 1, and then to take dv to be e to the minus t dt. So that means that du is k plus 1, t to the k, and then v is minus e to the minus t. So that du obviously involves a dt. Okay, so now using the integration by parts formula, which says that the integral of u dv is u times v minus v du, that leaves us with one half, and then we have u times v, so that'll be t to the k plus one, e to the minus t, with a minus sign evaluated from zero up to infinity, minus the integral of v du, but the two minus signs cancel, the one in the integration by parts formula, as well as this one right here. So we get plus the integral from zero to infinity of k plus one times t to the k. So I'll bring that k plus one out front. Then we have t to the k e to the minus t dt. Great. Now, if we evaluate this at infinity, that's like really taking a limit. The exponential will always win, but it's in the denominator, so that gives us a zero. Then evaluating this at zero also gives us zero. So this whole thing turns into zero, leaving us with k plus one over two times the integral from zero to infinity of t to the k e to the minus t dt. Great. But now, using this substitution one more time, we can turn this back into our x integral. And what we'll see is that this transforms to k plus 1 times the integral from 0 to infinity of x 2k plus 1 e to the minus x squared dx. But that's exactly our induction hypothesis. So we get k plus 1 times k factorial over 2. Multiplying that out, that gives us k plus 1 factorial over 2, which is exactly what we need to finish off the induction step and thus the proof of this lemma. Okay, so now we're ready to move on to our main result. Now we're ready to attack our main result using this lemma. And we'll do this first with a trigonometric substitution. So since we have a one minus x squared, that motivates the trig substitution of x equals sine theta. So that means dx is equal to cosine theta d theta. It also means that one minus x squared is cosine squared theta using trig identities. Furthermore, when x is equal to 0, we have theta is equal to 0 because sine of 0 is 0. And then when x is equal to 1, that tells us that theta is equal to pi over 2 because sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1. Okay, so that builds out our substitution. So let's see what we're left with. We have the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of... So we've got x to the 2021, so that'll be sine to the 2021. So let's write that down. So sine to the 2021 theta. And then 1 minus x squared to the 1010, but that'll be cosine to the 2020. And then another cosine from the dx, that gives us a cosine to the 2021 theta d theta. So we're left with something like that. And then from here, we're going to use a bit of a trick. And I'd like to point out that this is maybe like what could be thought of as a stylized version of this solution, maybe like a final draft, not something you would come up with immediately. 
So we're going to multiply this by a number 1, and the version of the number 1 will be 2 times 2021 factorial over 2 th times 2021 factorial. So I think we can all agree that that's a version of the number 1. And then we have the same integral. So the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of this sine of 2021 theta times the cosine of 2021 theta d theta. Now we'll take the 2021 in the numerator and the two in the denominator and rewrite it using this formula that we have right here, except the variable that we use will be r and not x. So that'll leave us with two over 2021 times the integral from zero to infinity of r to the two times 2021 plus one times e to the minus r squared dr. And then we've got the integral from zero to pi over two of this sine to the 2021 times cosine to the 2021 d theta. Okay, so just to reiterate, I took these things that are underlined in yellow and I replaced them with this integral via our um, lemma over here. Now I'll take this power of r and I'll use this power of r to combine with one of the sines and one of the cosines and the leftover power will be combined with the dr. So let's write this as r to the 2021 times r to the 2021 times r. And like I just said, I'll take one of these, so this r to the 2021, I'll kind of put it in line with the sine. I'll take this one and I'll make it with the cosine. And then I'll finally take this one right here and I'll put it with the dr. Okay, so let's see what that's gonna look like. So that'll be two over 2021 factorial. And then we'll have the integral from zero to infinity and then the integral from zero to pi over two. So I'm changing this product of integrals to a double integral. And then we'll have r times sine of theta to the power 2021, r times cos theta to the 2021, and then r times e to the minus r squared um, d theta dr. But now from here we'd like to recognize this as a double integral that can be put back into rectangular coordinates. So let's notice if r is trending between 0 and infinity, which it is, and theta is trending between 0 and pi over 2, that's the same thing as x and y trending between zero and infinity. Given the fact that we can think of as x of like r cosine theta and y is r sine theta. So just to reiterate, we'll set x equal to r cosine theta, y equal to r sine theta. And then by the change of variables rule, we have r dr d theta is equal to dx dy. And then finally, r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And that's just from the Pythagorean identity. Okay, so that leaves us with 2 over 2021 factorial. And then we'll have the integral from 0 to infinity, the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the 2021, y to the 2021, and then e to the minus x squared minus y squared, but we can split that up, e to the minus x squared, e to the minus y squared, dx dy. Okay, so that's where we are. Let's maybe bring that up and then we're ready to start finishing this thing off. So we just got done transforming our double integral in polar coordinates to a double integral in rectangular coordinates. But now since our integrand is a product of a function of x and a function of y, we can split this up into the product of two integrals. So that leaves us with two over 2021 factorial. And then we'll have the integral from zero to infinity of x to the 2021 times e to the minus x squared. But I might as well write that as x to the two times 1010 plus one to make it look like our lemma over here, e to the minus x squared dx. And then I have the same thing, but with just y replaced with x or x replaced with y. But since those are just dummy variables, I can really just take this 
and square it. But again, this is exactly our lemma where this 1010 is playing the role of n. So we can apply this result over here. So that's gonna leave us with two over 2021 factorial times, let's see, we've got n factorial, so that'll be 1010 factorial over two quantity squared. But that gives us a four in the denominator, which will be canceled down to a two by the two in the numerator. And then we have 1010 factorial times 1010 factorial over 2021 factorial times two. And I think that would be like maybe the nicest way to write the final value of this integral. And that's a good place to stop. Thank you.